oratory you do a saga at lingit in a con kagit you a tongue you got how what she yeah you get on con kagit you a tongue cash how away how he out the two way you a tongue shook what I have a kill me a duck was he's a cool a chain kuu a yende shani a dochant hasuwa at kyochne kahani kuuch hasu tawasuku hasu chaitr a kaushikit hasu yuchatangi wasa ya has ku zuke gwash has ausuku a atina konachoe ha ya ti ya yi datach tawasuku hasu chaitr lingich to kachtul tuu a day you had to play at Gia. Quash e carnian, connit canai. Has to in your ak gitan. Hest a chunky you a tongue a ya. Quash a a tina has ya tea knock, yak ya tea you a tongue. Ya do a ha e has out a two. A do a isa quash yat a ye away after was ago. Gartu tu, ye e digger to tootling get enough. A ra away, a conne a dad yuk a gartu. Ye jigger to ne. Gad a wig oak. Hatu nagu yes, you do a sago at a cuckwa tu. A shing get enough. A ra wash, play cock enough to heat. Ya na ye Willie Marks, I ya decide let cock enough. It's ucht hit you do a sock way now and edge come hospital. Way gal coa. But can a hilly unique. A cowshe hit do to us a good do na na ye it. Ha eight hours ah he. Ah, ha yat ye keeny. Ach kani yan, ach shishk o has, shta kat yede ach i yi ka wa ha. Ach ta at has, ach tu wu yin nik, ya yi ya khud shash, shakhu shqe ni. Ach aya, cha ach seh, qa yi a khid aya. Yiw du zinne ach jiyis ya at. A ye eat a catan, Kaya. Ah, ya at a day a tooch with the yako ye, ya ha chuni. Ya how she chuni coo. Ya do da ye jitu ne ye, gun cheese hearty a de. Ah, why you cry, why you cry a name, why you cry a name, sawe, ya a tago conky. Ach i te chawu ye a yann as keich. Sinu, nid ch nach tu kuch. Willie Marks, Mount Edgecombe Hospital. Yes, you who are sitting here, my brothers-in-law, my grandparents, you are related to me in many ways, my mother's paternal aunts. I am grieved that I can't look among your faces. This is why, so you can at least hear my voice. This recording was made for me, that I might in some way speak to you. Yes, this is how I compare our wounds, these people who wounded us, those for whom we are doing these rites. Thank you all for coming. Yes, at what point would this ancestor of mine say to someone who was to succeed him, wake up, let's go along the beach by boat. What does Kuhn Aya? Ya ha shuka clean, a ka eki ye teeh ye ye hoots. Aya ye de a wech du stage, where ka kelk is a tea ka. A ka away shut the nooch, on the ukoch. Ya a shut du the tea ye yeh. 
Kleyin Katin away we yak, you go away yak na good. Ya ye sunny claim. A car away, I jacund a cage where car eat a car, gook. A jacar will good you. I will only away cake. Just tune dain, duck dain a shift. A itna he is you yonder's cage. A itna ye cut. A good in a way hoods a good. Clack, tell a cuckoo was she you are. Just arch a hey kindy, I was at. Hutch the tuny, ace the tuny, yes, away kindy as eight. Where arch who are you yet see need. A car away, a car away, yak a good. Yet the tuny, hey, the asha art nooch with arch. Ach as dig we una eat he. Ye aya ach to wooch with a yak. Ya yur satini. Yak art, yak aya, ach jig to de oo. Yang ne she a de. Ya ye ya dug hood ach was rainy. Ya ach tuni re de awake for tea. Gosh a car yak 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 for hanen. Ha ye a yas cook what tea shak de ya eat ye art has. Has to chun yer eight days a gursha art, ya ye as a goo woo. Ye a yas to call hut the tea. It was known when this great ancestor of ours, this brown bear, would come down to the beach. A man, a person's nephew, would be asked to lie and wait for it. That is when he would get out of bed. They would begin paddling to where it was expected to appear. When the boat stopped, it was coming down there, this immense uncle of yours. That's when he would say to the man who would succeed him, Go ahead, it's walking into your hands, he'd say. After the nephew shot it, no, only wounding it, it would run into the forest. Go chase it, his uncle would tell him. Having followed it, he would return. No, I didn't find it, the nephew would say. It had only torn up some skunk cabbage. They were for his open wounds. The animal was tearing up the skunk cabbage for his wounds. Then with their help, he was able to walk. He put the skunk cabbage on his open wounds, plugged his gunshot wounds with them. This is how I compare it. You whom I see here have become like skunk cabbage in my hands. Looking among the faces of you who have come here, I will apply them to this open wound of mine. Perhaps this will help. I will be able to stand again. Now perhaps this is how your paternal aunts will be. You will apply some of your kindness to this open wound. This is why I am grateful. Gunchi Shuhan. So I'm happy that we're here and that... Uh, Yilt Uch Ta stepped in last week to teach you all. She's a wonderful uh, language scholar and teacher and learner, and she documents a lot of language, works with a lot of elders, and has for a long time. And uh, then I was thinking of oratory, which we call Khan Qaqit Yukhatangi, which maybe I should show you folks the, how that's written. And then I thought, since we're talking about oratory, we should take a look at uh, some some of the big stuff. Uh, let me find this word first. Not male talk and look at the same time. Okay. So Khan Khagit is this word. Let me zoom in here. So Khan Khagit is uh, in public, in front of people, uh, and then Khan Khagit Yuk Auditani, or Yuk Atangi, is um, public speaking. So here you've got Ka In Khagit, which means sort of like uh, to sort of be there in front of the people, basically. It's a, kind of a big, complicated word, Khan Khagit. And then Yuk um, Atangi would be speech making. But I thought since we're talking about this stuff, we should look at the words of the masters and, and give a lot of credit to Nora Dauenhauer 
uh, Rosita Whirl, Johnny Marks, Forrest DeWitt. Uh, Frederica de Laguna needs to go in that category as well, John Swanton. For folks who really sort of ushered in the era of recording our language so that we can learn from the mouths of these masters. And then I thought about, uh, I'm going to do some work with uh, Thought, Florence Shakley, who is Nora Dauenhauer's sister. And uh, the, the Marx family is just a really strong pillar in the language. Uh, there's many of them who've done tremendous work and who still are. And their their ancestor was Keith Yanai, Willie Marx. And so I thought we'd look at some of his words. And this was actually recorded uh, when he was quite ill in Mount Edgecombe Hospital. And so he wanted to make a recording in case he didn't make it that would be his Kuik which it was and which he, he did and it was. Uh, he didn't make it much longer after this, I don't think. Uh, but it's just really incredible to think of. And I wanted us to, to think about this because if you're going to be learning Tlingit and speaking Tlingit, there might come a time when you're expected to stand up and to speak in front of people or where something is needed. If the language is going to function in a medicinal way, uh, then there's certain things that usually need to happen, which is really bringing in metaphor and cultural concepts that are are really important, uh, like tied to, it's not only tied to the natural world, but it's tied, you know, he was Chukinadi, and they, they claim a spirit bear and a brown bear as their crest. And so when he starts talking about the bear, he's talking about an ancestor, he's talking about a direct lineage. And so you also invoke particular pieces of at -u. You, you invoke like particular things that you tie together and in this case he's talking about medicines and then when he's talking about medicines he's talking about learning from a, a bear like how to use some of these medicines and then comparing acts of kindness or you know literally he was saying you will you all will apply joy to my open wounds which is you know these are the, his last words to the people, and he was a wonderful orator. He was a storyteller, speech maker, uh, did wonderful things, an artist. He was a carver, and um, both he and his uh, wife, who's Emma Marks, they were recorded an awful lot by Nora because that was her parents. And then there was a time when they started recording. Uh, I think Frederica de Laguna had a lot of success in Angoon and in Yakutat, and then uh, Nora started to record in Huna and also in the Juno area. And then uh, Forrest DeWitt, I think, primarily recorded himself and his mother. Uh, John Marks recorded a lot of folks up in Haines. Uh, but one thing that Nora said is when she first started recording, uh, people would tease her, call her beatnik, like walking around with her leather jacket and her big briefcase that has a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and an Ampex. And then uh, some of the elders really didn't want to be recorded. At, at one point, Nora even said it was one of her biggest regrets in life was to go against what their wishes were and to sort of push them to get them to be comfortable recording. But I told her, you know, while she was still alive, that I was so grateful that she did that because now we have all these things we can learn from and keep diving in there. A lot of times we go into the stories, but sometimes I want us to go into the speeches as well. And so this is from a text called Hatubu Nagu Yis, uh, which is for our healing spirit. So Ha is our, Tu is our spirit or thoughts or feelings. Nak is medicine. Nagu is the possessed form of that noun. And then Yis is for. Um, so, questions, thoughts, ideas, anything that you wanted to share? I have a question about the reference to skunk cabbage because, you know, it, it almost seems like a weed or a, you know, it's got a strong smell. Uh, what was it? Was it a healing plant? Did it did it heal actual physical wounds in the flesh? Yeah, yeah. So it's got healing properties. It's not 
it's nothing that's really edible. Uh, you can cook fish in it, and so it does a lot to add flavor to fish. But yeah, it's a pretty special plant for us, which is always interesting too, because I think if you speak Tlingit and you learn Tlingit, then you just realize more and more about, you know, Sacht and Akat and Sekshatin, uh, you know, and like there's all these things that are all around us that are medicinal. And some of them are medicinal for like just maintenance, like Sekshatin and Sacht have a lot of uses, I think, that are just sort of like the things that I was taught I was like, yeah, we drink this every day. And we were taught that if you just keep drinking this, then you keep your body strong. Then there are other things. And then uh, it's it's sort of be like a cup of kind of not the strongest tea. So it's got this sort of lighter brown to it. Uh, and that's for this sort of daily use. That's what Kahwanish, George Davis would talk about. But then other medicines that you're going to make into something to be medicine, to try and sort of help with something specific, it would be pretty dark brown. Uh, and so you would be cooking it for quite a while. But skunk cabbage uh, is used as sort of like a, a bandage. Uh, and so especially you could kind of pair it with um, pitch. Uh, pitch is another really good one. Um, this is the speech where I heard about skunk cabbage, but I didn't. I never had anybody really talk to me about it. I had an elder who talked to me about she had she had put her face through this hole to look at something and there were these nails that were sticking out that she didn't see and they cut her face on both sides and she was pretty young and she was saying um, her name is Megan. when her parents got there they were really upset because they were giving her stitches and they said this that's going to leave a scar there'll be a scar on her face and so they got her out of there and then they put spruce pitch on it. And then they took a beaver pelt. And I guess if you know what you're doing, I wouldn't know how to do it. You can split like the membranes, the layers of that pelt. And then you could put that on as the, as the sort of bandage as well. And she said where she got stitches, she had a scar. And on the other side, she had no scar. So pretty cool stuff. So yeah, Yanaka, the word for medicine? Knock. No. What's the difference between that? So for a second, I thought you were saying like an octopus. <laughs> like, yeah. So they're, they're yeah. a little similar? They are. So you've let me put these three words up. Hold on one second. So uh, yeah, I think it has these things where sometimes a word is just uh, one sound away from a different <sighs> word. And that's the case here. So let me show you folks what we're talking about. Okay, so you have knock, and then you have oops, knock, and knock. So these are three different things. Uh, they look very similar. They sound similar. Uh, so you'll notice the first one has just a regular K. So this one is knock. 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 And it's got this little breath of air that comes at the end. That's what that W is doing. Knock. Yeah, oh, And then this is uh, medicine. And so knock, uh, can is sometimes a word for knock. hospital. And then you have the uh, octopus. And so this one, you see the underlying K on there. So this one is knock. 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 So if you uh if you can't if you're struggling with this underlying K, you gotta practice that because you'll say knock. You wanna say knock to wasagu. And you expect someone's going to go a tunk. They're going to go octopus hunting for you. But then they come back with a bottle of Tylenol. You're like, what is, what is this? I wanted the knock. And so the underlying K is the big difference. Then there is a low tone. So the tone also makes a difference here. So these ones 
na, na, then you got na. So this one is, uh, nor I like to call it punky wood. And so this is something we have all over the place. Like a tree falls down, it sits there for a, a couple years, and it just gets super crumbly. Like if you step on it, you could just break right through it. And this is this is how Raven tricked that deer, is with the punky wood. And so this one, so we go, knock, 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 knock. 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 So there's, and so again, if you're not careful with your tone, you do get an owie, tune, and then you say, you wanted to say, knock, ach, to us, but you say, knock, ach, to us, then they come back with this handful of punky wood, and you're like, what am I supposed to do with that? I got a boo boo. Or they, you know, or vice versa. You want some punky wood, and they come back with an octopus. I feel like there's a lot of material here for some funny skits. <laughs> Someone like wraps an octopus tentacle around your wound. <laughs> right, and then then they come back with like a. It ends, and they just come back with all three things. Like I, there they are. I don't know, or an octopus is holding both of them. They're gone for like a whole week, and then just to get all three. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, the octopus who's holding the medicine and the punky wood. And then you've got, you know, knock. Well, I don't know if you'd say dujiwu. I guess you'd say dujiwu. Because, uh, fun fact, um, we should do some body parts at some point. Uh, a couple of fun things. Well, let me, let's see. Oops. So let's, we'll switch over to a text called Hausanei which I don't know if we talked about as a group yet. So this is the textbook for really for intermediate Tlingit. And the idea is like, this is really what you call a grammar for a language. So I made a workbook and a grammar and I'm working on a dictionary. And, and those three things, like the dictionary, you go to look up words and to sort of as you learn more and more of the language, you learn how to use that as a quick reference guide to sort of look up how to say things, uh, or if you can't remember the difference between some of those words. And then a workbook is sort of saying like, here's, we're going to start teaching these lessons. We'll do this lesson, this, and kind of a sequence, you know, you can certainly do a bunch of other stuff, but saying like, here's a sequence that'll get you to sort of a point where you could start speaking. Then a grammar is to teach from, but it's also sort of like, you can read this to figure out how the language works. So it's got a, a lot of text in English explaining how the language works. And there's a couple of sections here, uh, one on tricky nouns, so a whole bunch of words that just sound the same. So, you know, you've got, uh, they're usually one sound apart. So chak is eagle, chak is long time ago or for a long time. So there's a whole bunch of these, uh, and some of them are related things, uh, you know, like smoke hole and outside are probably related concepts. Uh, and then some of them, you know, they could be specific body parts you might be saying when you meant to say something else. And then there is, let's see, what do I have? I think I had a list of body parts in here. Which, Yeah, so here's, so when we start looking at body parts too, I think they're pretty fun because body parts can have body parts. So like you could say, uh, we use the pronoun ach for my. So for your head, we'd say ach sha. 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 And then you have, uh, I don't know how I can't remember how I got this organized. I think it goes kind of top to bottom. So I'm going to scroll down quite a bit and look for the finger. So sha is head. We're going to go, here's the arm. So then we have a hand. Oops, I will suck the text. So hand or 
upper arm or the, like this lower part of the well, I guess yeah, this whole part of the arm is achjin. 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 And then these four, these four, or these eight, I guess, your fingers is. Now, there's two ways to say it. We're going to say the northern way. The southern way would just the vowel would change. So for finger, you say uh, it's right here. Ach, 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 Achsha, Achjin, Achjin, Achkeq, Achkeq. Part right here is Achkeqsha. So your finger has a head, Achkeqsha. You have an upper arm, Chik, Chiksha is the shoulder. So the upper arm has a head as well. So there's a whole bunch of body parts that also have body parts. And that stuff gets kind of fun when you start to get into it. Then you get into like the palm and the lines on the palm. Like there's, there's names for everything. And some of them have pretty fun connections. Like, so that's these four and you have eight of them. And what's pretty cool is what else has eight little things? Nak, an octopus. So an octopus tentacles those are also called k'ek. So you'd say nak k'ek, octopus tentacles. Uh, and then you also have two of these guys, which don't count. These are the non-octopus parts. And this is ach goosh. Ach goosh. Ach goosh. Ach goosh. Ach goosh. And a, a killer whale, Keet, also has goosh. It's a dorsal fin. So you can go like this with your goosh, and you can go like this with your k'ek. So you can go octopus around, and then you can killer whale around. Is there a question? Ah. So I was listening to your recording of Cyril George counting, and he was explaining that Gushuk nine is when you do a shinket that's supposed to be the thumb smiling. But how can you explain that more? Like I got how the words break down, but I don't get how the thumb is smiling, even using your hands in the shinka um, counting. Or there we go. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> well, like yeah, because he well. What I would see, what I remember him doing was going like this, and then he had the thumb left, and like, and so like gushuk was like, and so when you go, he went one, two, three, four, five, or tlech dech nasta hun ke jin, tledushu, dachadushu, naskadushu, gushwushuk, which I don't know, it's just sitting, it's just there. Why, why, and so wushuk is actually, laughing or smiling but it could be interpreted as either way but yeah he never explained that he just said i was like okay that's really funny and but i never thought to ask like why so yeah it's a bummer i wonder that every time i listen to it and i was like how is how is that smiling but goodness sheesh <laughs> wait don't you see a smile here it's like a smiley face oh maybe it looks like a smile right because it's kind of the way it bends <laughs> I like that. I can roll with that. <laughs> okay, any other thoughts, questions? Okay, so we can, I think we'll kind of continue where we were uh, a couple weeks ago. We kind of, we did this introduction template so that, you know, you could if the opportunity, like if we said, okay, well, let's go around and say who you are. If we were going to do that in Tlingit, you could do that. 
using this. Uh, this is from the beginning Klingit workbook, uh, second edition, which there should be a print version coming soon. Although I keep hearing that. Uh, so you can, there's two ways to say your name. So the first one is saying, uh, literally, people call me. And then the second one is saying, is my name. Uh, but this is also works for namesake. So if you were named after somebody, that would be a, like, let's say there was some other khane, I guess, oh, say, you're my namesake, right? And so the first one, we're going to just sort of pay attention to the tone a little bit. So as far as the vowels go, we've got long and high, short and low, short and low, short and low, long and high. So we go, ooh, ah, boo, ah, ah. So just keep that in mind, like there's a rhythm to these vowels. And sometimes when we're teaching this, I, I'm guilty of this, is I really want people to hear this chat part. So I would end up saying, you chat, do wasak, whereas putting that just too high. So it should be going, you chat, do wasak. So everybody say, you chat do wasak. You chat do wasak. You chat do wasak. Okay. So that's. I am called this, so your name would come first. So that's where the blank is. So I'd say, as far as like the flow to it, and so there's also this W at the end, so it should be ending with, okay? And you could also say, you could pick one, whichever one you want to use. Short high, short high, uh, short low, long low, short high. Ah, 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 Okay, just keeping those vowels in mind. So then if you wanted to say uh, in English, uh, and some people say English, some people say which might technically be Russian, I don't know. But um, means through the mouth of a white person. Uh, and this is how you, and so you don't have to repeat the verb, I don't think. So for example, uh, I could say lands. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? But in, this is how you'd say, and you could change this to you could change it to German, you could change it to Norwegian. And then the chenach means through the mouth. Ch is a mouth. Nach is through. So let's start with actually <clears throat> just saying that word on its own. So everybody say chenach. 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 So this last X on here is like a nice, deep, snoring, sleep. And that, that for, that's actually a phrase in Tlingit. That means you're kind of just fed up with somebody. I taught that to one student, and then she just said it to me all the time. I was like, hey! And she said, I'm just practicing my X's. I don't know about that. And then if someone were to maybe like startle you awake because you're snoring too loud, even though you're in this nice deep sleep yourself, then you might go, <sighs> maybe you'd startle awake with that kind of noise. And that's what this one is. So you're trying to make this <sighs> with, <laughs> without your lungs, you get <sighs> <laughs> Enough. 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 
and getting to this ka, there are two ka words. They are exactly the same in terms of how they sound, but in terms of how they function, they are different. And so it is a little bit tricky because I think there's actually several versions of those two words. So one of them does mean male. So ka can mean a, a man, a male person. There's also a low term tone version, which you could put before a noun to mean a male thing. Ka quwakan, a male deer. Ka douche, a male cat. Ka cake, a male dog. So there's a high tone, low tone version of that one. Then there is a separate identical sounding one, which means a person. And so this is the one area well, there's a few, but this is one of the areas where Tlingit is gendered. Uh, similar to English having sort of like, from the dawn of man, and man is like people, right? And that can be sometimes frustrating because you can end up omitting females or omitting people who also have alternative other gender identities. Uh, but Ka is a person, and that's what this one is, white person, mouth, through, and I'll tell you a very quick story. So there used to be a fancy, kind of a fancier gallery here in Juneau. I don't know how fancy it was, but maybe they thought they were really fancy. And this, I'll say it because I'm going to make fun of them a little bit, a little bit. And I used to like to go in there and look at artwork and they had a lot of Northwest Coast stuff. And Marvin Oliver was a really gifted artist who did really neat things where he would emboss paper with designs and then have painting painted designs around them very very cool looking stuff so i saw a similar thing by a different artist which looked like the face that you'll see in a chill cat blanket like in the middle where the, the where it represents the spirit of the thing and it was embossed on white paper and there was no paint on the design and the they had you know, the artist sometimes signs on the right hand side, has a title of the piece on the left hand side, and then the edition in the middle. That's what they had here. On the left hand side, the title of this piece was Glait Ka. I was with a friend and I said, Hey, look, the name of this piece is Glait Ka. It means white person. That's interesting to me. And whoever was working at the gallery, I don't know, there was this is a communication misfire. And in English, not even in Tlingit. And they said, oh no, this is a this is a native artist. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I get that. But the piece is called Tlaid Ka, which means white person. And they said, it's a native artist. I said, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that the Tlingit language is used on this piece and the words Tlaid Ka means white person. That's all I was saying to my friend. So guess what happened? They said, it's a native artist. So I said, this word is Tlaid. That means white or snow. This word is ka. That means person. That's all I'm saying. And they said, it's a native artist. <laughs> so I, just, I was like, I have to leave. I have to leave this place. I don't know what's going on. My reality has been disjointed. So it was just kind of fun. It was kind of fun and kind of funny. I wasn't trying to be angry or I wasn't trying to upset anybody, but it was just really interesting how we could not communicate, which sometimes happens. Like sometimes you can speak the same language and you just misfire. Happens all the time. Having me just say the other day with an email. I was like, man, you should have said this. And I reread the email. It's like, oh yeah, they, they said that. Okay. All right, moving on. So the next one is to be a member of a group. This verb works for attaching a clan. You could attach a nationality. You could attach a career. You could attach sort of being some type of thing. Uh, and then, but the, the big thing is like being part of, being one of these things. And then the thing gets named and it gets a suffix, this underlying X after it. 
That's what attaches it to the thing. This is a related verb to yati. When you say like wasaiyati, how you be, then you could say yechat yati, that's how I am, right? So that yati verb is to be. When we change the classifier to an S classifier, we're saying we got to put it into a category now. We're using categories. The S very often was used for categories to say it's some specific thing. And in this case, it's saying to be one of these things or to become one of these things. So you could put a clan here. Uh, you could also put, uh, well, in this, we'll just use a clan. Like we'll use, um, we'll borrow from our relatives. Uh, well, let's see. We'll use uh, one that's maybe not too hard to say. Uh, our relatives from Sitka, uh, they are Kiksadi, and they're also Kiksadi all over the place. They come from a place called Kiks, uh, which is Kiks. Uh, it's a bay. I forget now. I should know. Uh, but for if you were Kiksadi, you would say Kiksadi Khatsati. If you were Kaguantan, Kaguantan Khatsati. If you were Kanakhtaidi, Kanakhtaidi Khatsati. So this underline X attaches to the word. And you could say Norwegian Khatsati. Whatever, whatever you wanted to put there, you are that. And that could also include. Like if I'm a teacher, uh, if I'm a, I don't know, a coffee connoisseur, I'm the coffee master. Uh, but if you put alcohol on there, like now, you're saying I'm an alcoholic. So just the uh, it means like a the boss or the master. But it's really interesting the way that it works sometimes. Because you could also say, Tao Tatechatsati, I'm a thief, right? So um, but it's this is most often used to talk about clans, but not all of us are Klingit, or not of us, maybe you know, our parents are have different backgrounds, so you can also put Tashoni Khatsati, I'm Tashoni, Gwichin Khatsati, Inupiak Khatsati. If you're speaking Klingit and talking about your identity, this is what you use. And if you're wondering how to use it, <clears throat> you are what your mother is from the Klingit perspective. So if you were to speak Klingit and if you weren't Klingit, you would just like, let's say your mother was German and then your father was Austrian, you would say German Chatsati, or you could say it in German if you wanted to. And then you would get to the Yedi and that's where your father's people are. So then you'd say Austrian Yedi. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Okay. So then you could follow that with either quch, na, ch'ak, na, uh oh, it's missing an apostrophe. Or yesh, na. So there should be an apostrophe right there. Uh, so that's saying the moiety. Na is a word that means a group, nation, or uh, tribe. So then the next line, what you acknowledge is your father's people. Not everybody has to. Maybe dad left, or maybe it was a bad relationship, whatever. Uh, or like maybe something happened and then you have a someone who raised you. It's up to you what you sort of say here. But in some situations, like biologically, you would acknowledge your father's people. And they can go multiple ways. Like my father is Yupik and Sami. So I could say Yupik Yeti Kasami. But he was also adopted into the Kaguantan. So I could say stuff like Kaguantan Awe do Yetasu Wasa. Achawe Kaguantan Yeti Ayachat. The Kaguantan named him. That's why I'm a child of the Kaguantan. But this is your father's people. Uh, historically, when families have, if the family has good, solid relationships and everybody's getting along and nothing, nobody left anybody or anything like that, then a lot of times, like this is the main folks you really talk to in ceremony is your father's people. Uh, you don't really talk to your own people. 
and you certainly don't talk about how cool or awesome or great you guys are. There's like such an indigenous thing. I've been running into this like at the some meetings lately. As people say, I'm not trying to brag, but we were the best basket makers. We were the best. Everybody else was really good, but we were the best. And I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we were the best. Like I, I see that sometimes at meetings. Like I was at a meeting and this guy said, was like, I'm not trying to brag, but we were, we were the best hunters. We were the best. And I was like, come on, man, that's bragging. How did that not be bragging? Okay, anyways. So try not to boast. It's always like one of your goals in, in Shlinget is don't, if you're small groups of people, like really small, everybody knows each other really well. You could do a lot of teasing. You could do a lot of stuff. But in public, like just be real careful. Uh, this would the grandchild would be your mother's father or your father's father. Both of those you're considered a grandchild of those clans. Uh is your mother's mother's father's clan. And that should be a like historically people married the opposite. It doesn't always work that way now, but it would usually like say if I'm Shuka Khadi. And my mother was Tukach Adi, and of course her mother would be Tukach Adi. But then if her father was uh, Dakhloe Adi, then that would be my Daka Um The name of the clan house. Uh, and there's different ways to do all of these things. This is just so showing you one example of how to sort of move through it. It's sort of like you do this part, and this part, and this part, and this part. And you don't have to do all of them. Uh, but our clan house, you would say, the name of the clan house, Yesh hit, Shtin hit, Chak Kubu hit, whatever whatever it is. And then you would have Aya Ha Na Kahiti. So there's the Na, and then Kahiti is literally house on that. But it, it works, it's just, you'll see some different things that have Kahiti built in them. Question. I'm going back to the Yadi. Uh, my question is, so if we don't have good relations, Yadi, and um, the next line isn't very applicable, grandchild of, because grand, the, both the grandparents are one, you know, if you don't have good relations with your father or they're not in the picture, and then your maternal grandfather is non shinka but if you have good relations and good relationship with your your matern your great grandparent great grandfather on your maternal side would it be appropriate to then address your dakunuku plan yeah yeah like i would say it like any of these are just kind of super optional i i would say and, and just and and there could be a context too like if you stand up, like if, if you need to introduce yourself or we're going to show you like how to introduce somebody else, which is a better way to do things generally than standing up and saying, here's who I am. But in the case of a conversation, like as I've gotten to know elders, they've, they want to know who's your people, where are you from? They want, they want to know all this stuff so they know kind of how to address you. But these can get kind of complicated if you have, uh, you know, sometimes relationships go bad and sometimes people don't do a great job and, and weren't ready or things happen to them. There's all these traumas of people get, maybe you were adopted and then you, you have some hard feelings towards the, the folks who did that, which is all understandable. So like these are not mandatory to talk about, but you can also sort of still have a special relationship with that clan too. So. Like even if one individual um, didn't do a great job and had a hard time or whatever, like maybe their siblings were always really good to you. You're by saying yeti, you're not just attaching it to that individual. You're attaching it to an entire clan, and you're you're talking about that relationship. And maybe just by talking about it, <clears throat> someone's gonna sort of treat you like a like a good like a parent, you know. And so long time ago, the whole clan like really took a lot of responsibility for raising kids and it wasn't so much on an individual, <clears throat> which I think creates probably, in my opinion, higher rates of failure because you're not there to really hold each other up. And it was to a point where you'd often call your mother's biological sisters, you would call them mother as well. So like all of them would be your mothers. And so, uh, 
but you could, and you can also, you cannot say Yedi, you could just jump right to Dechan. If, if you have some kind of harsh, if you might have some feelings because maybe your parents were the same moiety or something and you didn't want to bring that up publicly, you could also skip that part too. And you could just talk about the Dak Anu Ku. And you can also, like, <clears throat> if my father was Tehwedi, I'm not trying to say anything bad about any clans, and for whatever reason kind of got out of the picture, and then my mother remarried to someone who was Yen Yedi, and that person raised me, I would probably stand up and say Yen Yedi Yedi, because it's not always tying strictly to biological relationships. And if my name is Khane, and then there was a Khane before me, and that Khane's dad was um, Wushkitan, then I would also be Wushkitan Yedi, because I would take, I would inherit the relationships of that predecessor. So it, kinship is really interesting. It's also based on personal relationships. So someone could sort of become something, like you could have two people who are not biologically related, not clan related, but through very close personal relationships, they begin using kinship terms as if they were. Like it's very common for people to just start using the sibling terms because they are becoming very close. So my question is more specifically about like ceremonial speaking. So like my father's Kineka and not um and hasn't been in the picture since I was born. And then my grandfather were close with my maternal mother's father, but he is non-native, but we were um also close with my maternal's or my maternal father, non-native, and my maternal grandfather is duck detente, and we were close and we keep that. Um, but now that you've also talked about Aksai, I have my grandmother's name. And so would I refer then, it would be technically both my Yari and Dakhanuhu would be Takdeton? Yeah, so that would be your mother's mother's father. Uh, and I have my grandmother's name. And so that would be her husband. Hmm? That would be your, your grandmother's husband that you're talking about? No, my grandmother's father. Okay. Yeah, so you could use Dakanuku and you could also use Ish. Uh, because if you have that name, then that's also... <clears throat> and that relationship is so strong. Like this one elder, she, um, when our firstborn child was born and she met her and she said, um, I want her to have my name. And so I was like, wow, what an amazing honor. And she was one of my lifetime teachers. And then she called me like a couple of weeks later. And when I answered the phone, she said, hi, dad. And then the elder was calling me father. And she and she even said, I never knew my dad when I was growing up. So I've always wanted to have one. And, you know, and, and she passed away not long after that. And, and she meant it like she was absolutely. And so like those relationships go beyond in single individuals that go beyond time. And that also helps us to sometimes repair some of these family relationships as well is by someone stepping into that role and, and it could be you as as you're learning Klingit and then some other kid is learning Klingit and you want to step in and and take on some of these roles that others um, had a hard time fulfilling like the opportunities are there wow what a profoundly beautiful story the healing uh, within that uh, practice is just really um, unbelievable yeah and and so when we get into the the kinship too there's the the nieces the nephews the aunties the uncles and, and all of these relationships are are really special and it, it shows us you know to sort of step in and, and to become the collective I, I think there's a verb which is um it's say like what the duke like coming back to this thing that we started with for this session was um we're gonna go find it real quick so we're gonna go back to hatu nagu yis and when he's talking about uh like this this phrase right here is just so so wonderful so he says uh so hastu them alls is chuni wound so chun is a wound 
khede, there's that mouth, right? It's it's an opening. Hastuchuni khede, to the opening of the wound. Uh, this letter S is a contraction of hus, which in this case is pluralizing the third person in this verb. They are going to carry it. And this is the verb for carrying personal belongings like luggage or something that's that's yours ya yi kasaguwu your joy they're going to carry your joy to their open wounds so it's bringing it back to metaphor it's bringing it back to things and this is someone like he was on his deathbed when he recorded this and he wanted people to hear this and his daughter was recording this from his mouth and like they all knew what was going to happen they all knew what the intention was and, and we come back to like the medicinal purposes of language and it reveals itself through these things and as you learn tlingit you get this sort of deeper view into all of it and it starts to it begins to unfold and it begins to unpack and it begins to reveal itself i think which is really amazing because when something that's a with the duke the the wound has become whole it has closed itself and then that's also a term that would be used for like people and nor used to talk about this she'd say they were solid and when she talks about that it means like they, they were a complete thing and so this is something else as we look at what's our intention for using and learning Klingit. Uh, a lot of it is to sort of keep the language alive, but it's also, you know, I was sitting there next to Selena Everson and she said, How Atangi. That's the name of that other book I showed you, uh, which is the grammar and it des describes how the language works. But that phrase means our language saved us. And I think that's really important because we talk about saving the language all the time save the language, save the language. But I think there's something more complicated going on as well, which was we need the language in order to become whole again. And one time I was talking to Nora and I said, I said, our language saved me because I'm, you know, I was going all kinds of sideways. And she said, me too. I was crazy. And it was just, it was such a fun moment to just talk about that and how it sort of pulls us back. So. Uh, whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, I hope that this language helps you. There's so much stuff in there as we just we just continue to scratch these little surfaces and look at this, the deep stuff that's going on, which is really, really fun. Anything else before we go? Good cheese, folks. See you next week. Good cheese. Uh, Good I. Ganachtish. Ah. Two. Ganachtish. Okay. Ganachtish. Ganachtish. See you, Kwasatin. Ah, Kwasatin.